Good morning and welcome to the final November ISM Lunch and Learn webinar. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest release of Stage 100 version 2018 or 6.0. Also included in that is the new Payroll 2.0. Our presenter today is Ms. Ty Duncan Whitcomb. She's going to be showing us the new products. And as well, Ty is going to be doing our only two webinars for next month. The newsletter will be going out in a few days, which are going to be year-end processing for Stage 100. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn everything over to Ty. Uh, one bit of housekeeping before I do. I will keep you muted throughout the presentation. We will open up for questions at the end. And if the question does come up, please feel free to use the question pane of the chat window, and we'll review those as well. Thank you, everyone, and welcome, Ty. All right, welcome to our Stage 100 2018 and Payroll 2.0. There's kind of a lot of information in all of this. So um, how I'm going to do it, I, normally I stop, share, stop, share, but I think to keep the flow of it this time, I'm just going to go through all my slides, kind of explain to you everything, and then we'll dive into the product, and I'll actually take you and throw you, show you um, through all the new features that are in the system. So. First things first, let's go through what all the global changes in the system are. Um, there's now spell checking that has been now included in Sage 100 2018. Um, the spell checking is in different areas where we have memos, messages, comments, um, notes that you put into different information in the system, broadcast messaging if you're doing it. If you have um, user-defined fields, you can have it where it will automatically spell check it to make sure if people are free-forming information into the UDFs, it is going to be doing that auto spell checking in the system for you. Bundled in this version of Sage is Crystal Reports 2016. If you are running a prior version of Crystal Reports, you will need to uninstall it to make this version work with your new Sage 100 2018 install. So that's one of the big key global changes in the system. And then barcode has been renamed. It is now called Mobility for Barcode. It's been a big misnomer, I guess, all these years. Uh, the product was called barcode, which if you think about what a barcode is, you would think, okay, that means I can print barcodes. But it was actually the conduit that allowed you to use a system like ScanForce, which is like a WMS handheld scanning system. It allowed that information to push into Sage, was using that Mobility for Barcode module. Well, now it's called Mobility for Barcode. Back then it was called Barcode. So that's been renamed just so that the name of the product actually matches the functionality of what the module actually provides for you. Um, biggest piece that really happened in accounts payable before it used to be called e um, Form 1099 e-filing and reporting. Um, because as you know, I would say four or five years ago, Sage partnered with Aatrix for them to provide your 1099 forms and your W-2 printing in the system. And so Sage has just rebranded that name to now it's just called Form 1099 Tax Reporting. Straight to the point, they've dropped the whole e-filing and reporting piece just because it's obviously, at this point, we all know it's the e-filing system. So they've just simplified that name. And also when you go into the system on that screen, um, for the payments, it used to just say minimum year to date. They've just simply renamed that to say minimum year to date payment. So just a few tweaks that actually happened on the screen that was not there before. One of the big key pieces that a lot of people have been asking for actually happened in inventory. So you now have the ability in inventory underneath your warehouse, ma warehouse maintenance to be able to now make warehouses inactive or restricted. So if you make a warehouse inactive, it makes it where it's, it's assuming that you are no longer going to be using that warehouse. And two, if somebody tries to use that in data entry, they would not have the ability to select that in the system. Where on the flip side, the restricted warehouse, it means you might not be using it at this time, but you might use it in the future, or there's still activity that needs to happen in it. And a user, unless there's a new security option behind it in the system, unless a user has that security event checked for them in the inventory management in their role maintenance, if they have a check, they will still be able to post activity to that warehouse, 
but the ability now to be able to post to a restricted warehouse is now security driven. Otherwise, it will act just how an inactive warehouse will act. And then also because of that, there's a new SO cancel and reason code in the system called RESWH, kind of like how there's some of the other ones that are saved and defaults in there for the cancel. There's a new one in there called RESWH for restricted warehouse. So that's one of the new cancel and reason codes that have also been added into the cancel and reason code maintenance for you in Sage. The next big piece that happened was in job cost. So now in job cost, all the data entry now is a grid entry, just like it is in sales order and GL and some of the other modules. You now have the ability to do batching. So in job cost, you have batch entry and job posting entry, job billing entry, and re field report entry. It used to be kind of what we remember those days a long time ago, how batch entry, you only could do one at a time. Well, now you have the ability to do multiple batches. So if you need to post some entries, but you need to hold off on some of the others, you now have that capability. Job cost now has history retention. So before in the system, it was just retaining the perpetual history for job calls. You now have a history tab where you can track how many years of job calls history that you now want to store in the system. And all the reports now in job cost are, no, are now in crystal. So anything that was on the reports menu is now written into the crystal framework, or should I say the crystal reports framework. So now all those job cost reports that have been on the system for years in the old system where you couldn't modify them, you couldn't touch them, they are now modifiable. We now can change those features in the system. And then because of that, non-graphical forms are no longer available. So if you want to have an old school form because you're still printing on an old dot matrix printer, that, that non-graphical form is now gone and you have to be able to design that now in Crystal Reports. So that was the big pieces that was in Sage 100 2018. The biggest driver of Sage, Sage 100 2018 was actually the new Payroll 2.0. So let's just go ahead and dive into Payroll 2.0. Out of the gate, Time Card is not compatible with Payroll 2.0. So if you are currently running Time Card now, integrated with Payroll, you will not be able to, at this time, upgrade your system to Sage 100 2018. Sometime in the first half of next year, they will be releasing a Payroll 2.0, or it'll be probably a 2.5 or two, whatever it's going to be, that will be compatible with Time Card. And that segues into this next part. We are now calling it Payroll 2.0 because Payroll now has the ability to be upgraded separately from your Sage 100 system. Why do they did this? The reason why they were doing this is because tax tables change, payroll rules and regulations change, there's a bunch of stuff that changes. Big case in point was ACA. So when the new ACA reporting came out for Sage, you had to upgrade your whole Sage 100 system to be able to take a bit, to be able to get your system ready for ACA. If you had modified your sales order, your inventory, your purchase order, and you were a good sized company, what happened was is you had to test everything in the system. There was a lot of moving parts so that you could be compliant on the payroll side. So what Sage has done, because payroll, as we know, is very fluid, they have changed it to where if for some reason a big new law changes in ACA and on the sudden we need to modify payroll, you can now technically upgrade to payroll 3.0 and still continue to run your Sage 100 2018 and be able to continue and function like you've always done. You no longer are forced to upgrade your whole Sage system at the same time. Payroll now could be upgraded separately and continue to upgrade and still leave your Sage version where it's at. Keep in mind, hypothetically, with 10 years from now, you're still running Sage 2018. You're not going to be able to run like payroll 10.0. There is going to be some limits of how far your payroll can get ahead from your version before your Sage 100 system is going to have to be upgraded to make sure it kind of stays somewhat in compliant with the payroll product as it continues to upgrade. 
So in payroll 2.0, we now have batch processing. So you now can set up multiple batches for payroll data entry. Right now, how it's always been is you only can run one payroll run at the same time. So if you had salaried employees and hourly employees, or if you had different departments that maybe were on different pay cycles, you had to run one at a time, post an update, run one at a time, post an update. You now have the ability to run multiple batches of payroll at the same time in Sage. You now get the grid entry functionality that is in sales order and general ledger and all the other modules. And there's now calendar buttons and calculator buttons. It's more, it's now actually, they've moved payroll to where it's now in the, what we call the 4.x framework. So it now looks like all the other modules that have been already upgraded to 4.x. All personally identifiable information, what they're calling PII, is now encrypted. So you have the ability on the back end of the system, names, phone numbers, email addresses, social security numbers, bank account numbers, and routing numbers if you're running direct deposit, is now encrypted. And there's an encryption key that goes along with that. Unless you have the security options in the system, you cannot see that in certain, like the social security number and the bank account routing information, you can have that information that when somebody views that information on the front end of the system in employee maintenance, all they're going to see in the system is XXXXX in the last four of the social or whatever that number is. All that stuff now is security driven on the front end and on the back end, it is also security driven. But some of the information, if you were to try to say, for instance, go through ODBC and look at that information, it is going to have that information. It will be blank. It's not going to export anything out of the system. And that's their way to make sure that the payroll system is very secure. So on payroll options, same thing for payroll. There is no more graphical forms. Um, everything now in the system is all crystal. I'll jump ahead of a few of my slides and go ahead and mention it now. All reporting registers, all that stuff in payroll is also now in crystal. So all that information is now editable. So if any of those reports that you currently see on the payroll screen that you've always wanted to change or add more information to, it is now all in crystal. So it is now all editable in the system. Um, the old benefit accrual button has now been replaced with the time off tab. And I'll show you when we get into the system, I'll show you all this information. Um, I'll just do a quick Rundown deduction codes have been changed from two to six characters and the descriptions have now gone from 13 to 30. Same thing on the earnings code maintenance. Department maintenance, I think right now you get either, I think it's two characters for or two or four characters for department maintenance. That's now been expanded to six, but you no longer can do special characters. So keep in mind, it has to stay alphanumeric. In the system, payroll tax calculation has changed. So, and we'll go through that. Um, payroll tax tables now um, are not maintained by you. They're maintained online, kind of like how Atrix, it keeps track of all your forms. Same thing for payroll tax calculations. There will be no more of you having to download the new tax table update first from Sage every quarter, every so on and so forth. Sage now maintains that all up in the cloud. Your system will ping that service um, to get the latest tax tables. Keep in mind those tax tables, look at the date of your payroll cycle to know which tax to calculate and apply. So say for instance, there was a new tax, the, your state released the new tax that's supposed to be effective December 1st, but you're still running the payroll today. It is gonna use whatever taxes it is as of today. But if you run that and you take the date of the check as dated for December 2nd, the system will know to apply the tax that went into effect on December 1st. Employee maintenance, last name, first name, all those characters have been expanded and there's some new fields that have been added in the system for middle names, suffixes, email address, and country fields. That's now maintained in employee maintenance in the system. And then pay, all oh, these stuff I'll just briefly go, but I'll show you a little bit better on the screen. Pay cycles, payroll and entry, check printing, direct deposits been renamed. Um, all, like I said before, your registers, your forms, crystal, all that's been put into crystal. And the names change. It used to be called federal e-filing tax and reporting and state and e-filing tax and reporting. But if you used to click on either one of those, it would take you to the same screen. So it's kind of redundant. It has been now rebranded and renamed federal and state tax reporting. So now you just go to one screen in the system and be able to see that information. 
Last but not least, a big piece of the system you now see is they've added this thing in the system called service notification maintenance. This goes along with the payroll tax calculation. What this service notification maintenance is, is you would need to go into the system and set up the email addresses of people who are responsible for running the payroll tax calculation. What happens is if the some reason the service is down, there is a new tax update that is released. Um, whatever is impacting or changing or affecting that system, if there's maintenance happening on that, the email address that you put in the service notification maintenance, they are automatically notified by email of what those changes that are currently happening on the system. So you want to make sure that if you're doing payroll 2.0 and you've upgraded that you're setting up a user in service notification maintenance so that they're aware of any payroll tax schedule changes, tax code changes, all of that they're being notified and they're being, and they are aware so that when they go to run payroll, they don't run into any kind of glitches in the system. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the system and I'm gonna take you from top to bottom and kind of show you what's going on in the system there. So this is the new Sage 100 2018. Um, in the system and I'm going to switch company codes here so I'm in the company that we need to be in. So let's go ahead and dive into the system. We're going to start at the beginning and work our way back from how I did it in the presentation. So here we go in AP. You're going to notice how I mentioned before it used to be called Form 1099 e-filing e and reporting. It is now just simply called Form 1099 reporting. That's it. No more, no less in the system. That's all that Sage has labeled it in the system. So that is where you will go to be able to see it. So just don't look for the e-filing and reporting. That's all gone in the system. All right. Underneath the system, where is it? Right here, mobility for barcode. This is now the new barcode module rebranded and renamed in the system. So this is where this is. It's now a module in here called mobility for barcode this is where that change occurred in the system. So that is where you would need to go if for some reason, depending on who you're using, ScanForce or whatever WMS system that you decide to use, that's where they will link through their system to make their functionality work. So let's go ahead and dive into inventory. This is one of the big pieces that has changed in the system. So now when you go in here into warehouse maintenance in the system, down here, this is your active, inactive, and your restricted date. If it is active, you just leave it alone to make it inactive. If it's inactive in the system, it does kind of what you do, same thing when you in AP and AR, if you're trying to make a customer or vendor inactive, it will go through and tell you, can it be made inactive? And if it can't, why can it not be made inactive? And it shows you why different things can or cannot be made inactive in the system. And then you would give it a reason code if you want to of why you're making it active. And then down here for the restricted, here's where you can go through and you can restrict it. And then you can select where you want to restrict this warehouse to. So say, for instance, you create a new warehouse in the system that's just for RMAs. I might create a new RMA warehouse and restrict it and only allow entry for it and RMA receipt entry just to make sure that they're only using it for this area in the system. Maybe I set up one that I want to track for credit memos and the system I can go through and it's only be allowed to use in sales order invoice data entry and shipping so that when they go and do returns, I want to make sure that they're returning that back into that return warehouse. So this is in the system, the new restriction of warehouses in the system and it's all in the inventory module underneath your warehouse code maintenance in the system. All right, let's keep rolling along. Job costs, let's switch to our job cost company here. Well, I will, if I can get my system back working. Let's see where it went, my screen disappeared. Give me a second to get it back. And I just lost it. Let's see. All right, we're going to 
I'll launch it again. Give me one second to get back in here. There we go. Perfect. Let's see if it'll let me switch companies. There we go. Let's switch companies. All right. Here is the new job cost in the system. So I'll go through and just kind of show you what it looks like. In job cost, here's the new job cost options I was discussing before. Here is the ability for you now to be able to turn on batching in the job cost module. And then over here on the history, you're now going to see the ability that you now have the ability to come in here and set up how many years that you want to retain job cost history for. And then if you come over here into the reports, say for instance I come over here to my job schedule report, you're going to notice it's now in crystal and I now have the ability to edit all these job cost reports that I never used to have the ability to be able to modify and change before. So that is the key pieces of the core system in SAGE where all the key pieces were done for SAGE 2018. So let's go ahead and dive into payroll. This is where the biggest piece of where everything for payroll has occurred. So let's go through the first one, which is our setup, our payroll setup options. So let's go ahead and do that. When you go into the payroll options in SAGE, you're going to notice that perpetual history is gone because now you have a history button here and you can now tell the system how many years that you want to hold payroll in payroll information for. So that retained perpetual history is now a thing of the past. It is completely gone in the system. Over here, you're gonna notice that they've changed some of the information. Your default state tax code is in the system. You have this new thing in here called location codes. Um, if you need to set them up, if you have like, um, kind of like your old local tax is kind of where that's going. And then you have default tax profiles. So you can set up profiles that if somebody lives in a certain area, it automatically creates a combination of all the taxes that apply to them in the system. You can set up what we call tax profiles and you can set up default tax profiles so that any new employee that is hired, it will automatically give them that tax profile unless you give them a different one. And then this allows duplicate social security numbers for employees, whether you want to allow that or not, instead of waiting until Anatrix finds it for payroll, you can go ahead and make sure you capture that at the time of data entry. This is the new time off screen. This used to be your old benefit accruals. So it's now been replaced by a description now called time off. And before you remember, you used to have vacation and sick were hard coded, but the third one, you can make it be whatever you want it to be. Now all three of these time off one, twos and threes are now all for yourself. You can set them up to be whatever you want them to be. So it's no longer tied to something specific. You can now make this information whatever you would like it to be in the system. Over here in entry, this is where I can now turn on my batching in the system. And the direct deposit is still the same. Nothing here has really changed. And then the only thing, as I said before, is you now have this history and you now have the ability to set up in the system how many years you would like to retain history for. So let's go to employee maintenance where you're gonna see some of the big key changes here. Here's your new employee maintenance screen in the system. Last name, first name, here you see where the new middle name and suffix fields are. Here's your new email address field that is in the system. You're gonna notice over here for phone numbers, you have the ability now to set up two phone numbers in the system, define what they are and set up which one is the primary number that is in the system for them in here. Social security number, because of my security rights, I can see the full social security number. But if my PII rights in, in my role maintenance did not allow me to, I would not be able to see that information at all in the system. This is all a security driven kind of right in the system. Over here on my additional tab, you have some of the EEO compliance information that's been added in here. I can now track for my ethnicity race, the gender, marital status, they have that information, if I'm a veteran or not, and if so, 
when was the military service separation date so I can track that, especially if you're trying to report numbers, if you need to have so many veterans on staff or minorities on staff. And then down here, you have the ability now to set, two, set up two emergency contacts in the system and track that in there for every employee that is in the system. Over here on your benefits tab, this is where we find all the time off information. This is where I can track all of that in the system. Vacation, sick, personal, there's my information. Quickly on my W-2, I can see all my deduction information that's in the system, whether this person has medical co coverage or not. And then my time off code, kind of like what your old benefit accruals are. This is where you would set up with the schedules that those people are applied to and all the information that I can see there. Taxes, this is just simply based off their tax profile. If I were to change this hypothetically to this person or somebody else, you will notice that their tax, which taxes that apply to them automatically change. But this is where that information is set up in the system. And then down here on my tax locations, where they live and where they work, I can track that information separately if I need to be able to track that information separately due to how taxes need to work in the system. If I scroll over, this is where I fill in what the information used to be, where we had that one screen that popped up. It's now all done in this one screen. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it all. Here's my federal. Here's where I set what the filing status is in the system, and it's all now grid entry in the system. There's that calculator button that I said you're going to now see in different places in the system. There's that calculator button, whether I need to do overrides in the system, that W-2 consent and that 1095 consent form. So this is where all this information is now in the system. I can track that and put all that information into the system. It's now all grid entry for me to fill in all my different deduction, my dependent information and my deduction information and my exemptions. Here's my pay defaults. You know that I can have the ability to do up to pay, nine pay rates. Used to be used to have pay rate one and pay rate two. Now I have the ability in the system to do pay rate one through nine and give comments. If I need to change the rate, I can give it a change comment right there in the system. So now if you have different employees that work different shifts and there's pay rates for different shifts, you now have the ability to do up to nine of those in the system. And this is the same salary bi-weekly. This information is pretty much still the same in the system. You still have your auto earnings button that you can still set up in the system so that if you set up an auto check, it will automatically assign that earnings to them in the system for that information. Over here on my earnings tab, this is just showing the same thing we had before. It's just now in a pretty grid year to date all the way across all the different quarters. And because now we have the ability to store multiple years, I can now simply change the year and get that information. And if I need to drill down and look at that information in a little bit more detail, because I want to break it out by month, I can now look at that earnings information by month. Same thing on the deduction side. I have the ability to go through here and see all my different deductions that are in the system. If I need to add a deduction in here, I can add that deduction information in there or I can just leave it, or it's the same thing before. I can drill down, look at the deduction, and see what that, for that year, I can see kind of what those monthly amounts were in the system and view and see where that's at. Last but not least, here's the pay history tab. These are all my checks that I've been issued, and same thing like before. I can have the ability now, because payroll is has the ability to have history like sales order some of the other modules now you're not rushing now every month to have to close on the quarter you now can keep one payroll system you're at the end of every year remember how we used to have to back it up to a different company because you needed to run checks for the thing but if you did it because of the w-2s that is now a thing of the past because payroll now has the ability to store multiple years and because we're using a new payroll tax calculation system where we get pay rates from, the system knows when you trigger different things in the system exactly what rates to use. So technically for me at the end of the year, if this was my live company, I can go ahead and go ahead and process my checks for January 2nd of 2018 and still be able to go back and run my W-2s and not have to worry and stress that I have lost that information somehow. All right, let's go ahead and dive into payroll data entry. There's my new batching that I have that ability in the system. So there's where I would create my batch. I would then go through and select whatever my pay cycle was. 
you're going to now notice we now have a starting and ending date. In the system, because of that starting and ending date, it will automatically calculate the ending date. If I put the ending date, it will go ahead and back calculate the starting date. You will now also see that the check date is now on the pay cycle button. On that pay cycle button, that number, when you go into check printing, is now grayed out. So you now have to assign the check date at the beginning of your cycle. It is no longer controlled at the time of your check. This is the reason why. People used to go into check printing, print their checks, something messed up on the check. They would go to reprint and forget to change that check date. Now you don't have to. You set it once, the system's going to keep using that date over and over and over, and you do not have to worry about that. All right? And then the same thing, none of this information has changed. Normal print checks, direct deposit, days worked, all that information continues to be the same. So here is your new payroll data entry screen, and you're going to notice it's slightly different from what you had before. So here's the information. It's kind of a, I guess you could say a prettier screen. Here's the information. You go to your lines, and you're going to now notice here it's all great entry base too. Kind of like in sales order where the information is at the top or you flip it to the side, you have that same capability to be able to look at that information in the screens like everything else in the system. They're resizable in the system. So here's my information. It's my rate, my hours. It now calculates straight across in the system. If I calculate my deductions, same thing. It's all now grid entry based in the system. And you just simply hit accept. It's no different than your payroll data entry. It's just now all a, payroll, a pretty grid. Here's the system where if you have batches, you can go through here and see all my different batches. It's telling me right here that my tax calculation hasn't been done. Here is myself going through running that tax calculation. At this point, it is now going out to the cloud to make sure that it is getting that information for me in the system to make sure I've calculated that correctly. Here's my grid. It's telling me the tax calculation is complete. And I'm just going to show you this one report. You can see here in payroll, the data entry audit report. Because it's now in Crystal, it is now all editable. And you can kind of see by looking at this report what I mean when I say this is now a Crystal-driven report. So here it is in the system. This is my new data entry audit report. I can kind of see my information as it rolls down and what my information looks like. But it is all in Crystal. So if you've ever had this payroll data entry audit report and there was information that you want to change to be able to see that information, it is now, you now have the ability to be able to see that information and make those changes as you wanted to before in the past. Let's dive back into some of the setups and just briefly show you. Here it is in the earnings code. You can see now in the system, here's my earnings code, which you can see I have a lot more information. I now have the ability to have a six care earnings code. Remember, you used to be able to have two, 01, 02, or TE for tips earned, or people did um, 41 for 401k or 4k for 401k. Well, you now have six characters now for that earnings code, and you have the full description here in the system that you now have the capability to do and to be able to calculate in the system. Same thing again in deduction code maintenance. You'll have that information there. Over here in department maintenance, the same thing. Here it is. There's my two digit one in the system, but I also have it has not gone away. Uh, nope, don't want to say changes. You still have security, so you still have the ability. The department security and SAGE has not gone away, so you still have that information av available for you in the system. Here's that new tax profile maintenance that I was talking about. This is how all your tax profiles and stuff are maintained in the system. So this is the old version. This is what the old federal tax table maintenance used to look like. This is now what it looks like. You come in here when you select it and you say which tax code or which tax gather that you're adding. It simply adds that into the system and you tell it whether it's work or residence or so on and so forth. And it will load that information into the system for you and it allows you to do what you need it to do. So mine's acting crazy because I'm trying to combine over and I shouldn't. So let's create a new one just so I can show you what that looks like. So if I were going here, I'm going to select Alaska and just for work. 
here it is and I can go through and just simply tell the system which one I want it to be able to calculate and which ones I don't want to calculate in the system. So all this information in the system, it automatically knows to calculate federal or in this case Alaska, what all the different regulations are. This is part of the new tax table maintenance. We are going to have other classes that's more in depth on the payroll just because there's a lot of new moving parts in payroll that was not there before. So if you want information on that, make sure you join on that webinar, especially if you're going to be embracing this new payroll 2.0. Last but not least is this service notification. This is the new thing that I was telling you about. So every time there's a maintenance, unplanned outage, or other event that may impact your ability to use the service as Sage is calling it, this is the new service notification. You set up all the employees that need to be notified, and they will automatically be notified when there's any changes or anything that they need to be aware of that will impact them from running payroll in the system. All right. And I will now turn this back over to Sherry. And I'll get Thank you, Ty. Very informative. I am going to open up the floor for questions. Are there any questions out there? I see nothing in the chat or the question pane. I am not hearing anything. Okay, well again, as always, if something does come up, please reach out to us. Thanks for the graphic, tie. You can reach me at am for account manager at goism.com. Or if it's a support-related question, please always reach out to our support team at support at goism.com. I thank everyone for their time today. I hope your holiday was bright. We look forward to our two year-end webinars in December. We will be dark in January for year-end close for the majority of our clients. And we'll be back uh, with brand new webinars beginning in February. So thank you everyone. Look for our newsletter coming out. It's got a lot of information on year-end procedures, year-end product updates, uh, and a lot of good news on stage 100C. Thanks everyone. Ty, thank you for an excellent presentation. Everyone have a great day.